So many lakhs were converted with pride they say. And what do these secular historians do? Pick up one example from contemporary history of India for, of the Sultan of period, this PTH publication by India History of this. Madoni writes that the two wives of the Gujarat ruler, they were taken to Delhi, converted, Alauddin Khilji forcibly married one, married the other to his son, and they were put, both put into the haram. And what have Nizami and Habib to write? Both the Rajput women were honorably taken to Delhi. The whole temple idol was broken. Badawi writes, this idol was sent on a cart to Delhi. Our historians will write, the aim was new. The aim was not religious. And when you question them, if it was not religious, then why the idol was broken? They will have no answer. I had to force this Irfan Abhi when for full one hour the Aligarh History Department head Nadim argued with me on Lalanji talk on Gyan Mapi and Mathura and when one by one I gave few examples at him and that two sources not any Bhartiya source but all the sources of the foreigners Irfan Abhi was forced to come on the TV next two days that yes, Aurangzeb broke these two temples. But this temple means that he should not take the mosque. When you question them, is your religion says that no mosque can be built on another's place of worship. So how come these are built? These were built? Why do you accept them? And then, no, 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 these were not built. In the funniest arguments they will give, I don't want to go into those details here. You can see a lot of the debates. I said, what are you doing now? Why are you being, buy, buying old churches in England and converted into mosques? Because technically, Christian religion prayers have taken place over there. This is all a bogey which you use of your holy book. Your only psyche is your brutality and how to extend that brutality world over. One of them said in a debate, Kabil ji, kya ihtiyaz ki baat karte rehte ho, vartwaan ki baat karo. Mein ka, ye maulana sahab, vartwaan ki baat karta hoon. Zara kafir shok hata dijiye ka, Quran ka. Zara gazwa hindi ki baat karni, baat kar dijiye ka. Debate shor ke baat karo. So you want talks of the past only because this jihad has taken a multi-dimensional approach today. It is no more a psyche of jihad with the sword. You see the doctor in Sri Lanka who was making the women infertile of other religions who were coming to him for treatment. That is another form of jihad. Though I don't agree with this word love jihad. It is not love. You should find another name for it. That's another form of jihad. The use of halal, another form of jihad. And we keep coming to this site. Biggest contributors, as pointed out earlier also, for the British. I don't know how many of you know that Queen Victoria once wrote to the Viceroy in the 1880s that these people keep fighting on cow killing, they don't know how many cows we kill in India in British Cantonments. I must give some credit to this. 
the remote Hyderabad and Bhopal, cow killing was banned. And it was started when the British reached there for their cantonments. But the British were the shrewdest. They realized that here in India, here in Bharat, they are not fighting the pagans of Africa. Here, their conflict is with a civilization which is thousands of years old and highly enriched civilization. So unless you destroy that civilization, you will not be able to dominate. So everything which was Bharatiya, whether it was religion, whether it was art, whether it was sciences, whether it was sculpture, whether it was story, whether it was literature, everything was in it. So if Kanidas has to be described, he will be described the Shakespeare of India. Shakespeare will not be called the Kanidas of India. If Kotelia has to be decried, Macavity of India. But you are the only superior. Kotelia is thousand years, fourteen hundred years before that Macavity. But that is great. And this is where they developed the psyche of domination. And in this process of this psyche of domination, Karl Marx also played a crucial role. If you look at Karl Marx's writings, no history of India. It's only the history of invasions. And the question is who is to rule over India? Whether the Turk is to rule or whether the England man is to rule. So Englishman has this task to give a new life to India, to make it India more. And what he says on Hinduism? A brutal religion. We are humans, being so intellect and all, worship a monkey and a cow. This is what the Marxists in Bharat continue to do today. Even they don't deserve to be called a Marxist of Bharat because they never believe in the concept of Bharat. One feels so, so bad when you hear them talking of freedom, liberty, constitution. Here, yeah. do they believe in it? As a Marxist for seven years, I know the first thing taught to a Marxist is establishment of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Not even democracy of the proletariat. In their psyche, the grandfather today is China now. The biggest money lender of the world. The biggest expansionist of the world, the biggest blackmailer of the world, a country which has no human rights with no democracy, no concern for its people. But the communist sitting here in Calcutta, in Trivindra, in Delhi, he is the Maibak, Jinpin of revolution. How dare you dare face to talk of liberty and democracy in Bharat when they support such a country? But that continues. Now, I'm skipping, I have 20 examples here to give from the text. But right from Mir Qasim to Ahmad Shah Abdali, you have so many accounts of these brutalities. Two lakh people taken by Ghazali. And if all the other aspects of resistance. It's a shame when a person who massacred 14,000 Hindus, innocent Hindus at Chittorda, 27,000 at Kumbhalgana, 30,000 at another place, is referred to as the great emperor of Bharat. And Marana, who opposed him all his life. From his name, you will remove Maharana also. What is this Hindu psyche? They call themselves Hindus? Or even Bharatiyas, forget Hindus. Who do this? Following the psyche of enslavement. 
the psyche of fear, the psyche of compromise. The Mughals could never rule over India. Only segmented parts. But the map prepared by Fanabi will be Mughal rule from north to south. And we will accept it. Where is the history of Ahoms? In the northeast, who did not let the Mughals enter those areas. How they fucked them. How many expeditions allowed the Khilji kept against them or Aurangzeb kept them against and they can defeat it. Where is the history of Durgavati? Where is the history of Chhatrasal? To name a few. And we take it shamelessly. Coming on the caste side. I was attending a seminar at the, what is that, social center seven. This Vasant Kuch, this director professor from JNU of the BR Ambedkar Center presented a paper on scavenging my local and she used the choicest abuses against Hindu and Hinduism that they are responsible for it. Unfortunately for her, I was sitting there. I got up. I said, ma'am, I happen to have read some history. Please, can you tell me when Sekenjin was introduced in India? She said, Moon Chodro, Hrath Pai, they are baths. I said, scavenging is not our culture. Even today the Prime Minister is shouting that I have toilets. And you are accusing Hindus of scavenging because your secularism will not let you speak that Kabod was brought into India by the tanks. And all those Hindus who refused to be converted were made to do this scavenging job and I salute those Hindus. And that is how Hinduism survives today among the Dalits. I'm sorry, the time is very short because things are many. I won't come more to the Indian examples, but I'll give something from the nice book. We have great love for our NRIs. You know, Canada jata hai, America jata hai, England jata hai. Kya hai, kya? And those who sustain the flag of Hinduism in Bharat, in foreign countries. Now we are putting them as OCIs, people of Indian origin. People don't know about them. <coughs> Who from Bihar, from Eastern UP, from South Tamil Nadu. Do you know that a full regiment of INA was formed by Netaji out of the Kuli migrants of Tamil Nadu in six months? Who fought in Imphal? 50% of the Rani of Rani Raji regiment were from Tamil Nadu, Kuli women. In a place like Trinidad, where they were taken, because the colonial rule was creating a society, a social order of their own, which they could not succeed in India. If you have to give your children education, you have to be a Christian. If you are not allowed to cremate your dead, to burn them. You are not allowed, your marriages are not allowed. I have seen with my own eyes those certificates. Illegitimate child, born out of a Hindu marriage. Family is separated. If someone is feeling sick on the ship, thrown into the sea. But there too, the Bharatiyas did that form of resistance. That's what Sandhi has done, what he calls Ramayana therapy. That they took that period as the Parvas period of Ramayana, so they have to face all these difficulties. 
before their rank. And within that, they formed their own panchayats. I came across an incident where this women's husband was sent by their black supervisor to some other place to work. And then he attempted to enter the woman's house and rape her. And this woman killed her with a knife. And then ran to her husband. And the husband beat her up. You are creating problems for us. But the whole panchayat gathered. Their house was surrounded by these bhartiyas. And none of them, the white force, could take over or take any action against that. How many of you have heard of the temple by the sea? Has anyone heard the name Temple by the Sea in Trinidad? Please Google it today. An indentured laborer who made a small idol, small murti out of clay was imprisoned for making a temple without permission on the land of that plantation state. Sadhu Seva Das, when he came out of that imprisonment, he was determined that I will make a temple. And every evening after days hard toiling in the cane fields, he will carry loads of stones on his shoulders into the sea where he can walk into the sea. Created a platform on the sea and made a temple over there. This is the psyche of resistance. <laughs> the psyche of resistance is not just necessarily to fight with a sword. You make jokes. You make songs. This song which has been given a filmy connotation now. Kala Shah, Kala Shah, Mera Kala Ye Sardar Goliyanu Dafa was the song of the revolutionaries in Punjab, sung at every function. Black is my lord throughout these whites. Jokes. <coughs> British man given sarso and saag to eat, sarso saag and makkah roti to eat. He ate the saag and gave it the roti, take back your plate. It's a mental thing that we are being ruled by people who don't understand our culture. These are the different forms of self. I don't know, there's no more time, I don't want to go into more details, but I'd like to say one thing only in the last, just last slide, sir. Gone are the days when we should offer our one cheek other cheek to be slapped if we, someone slapped on our one cheek. Gone are the days that we should wait that if someone hits us, then only we will hit back. We need to develop a Hindu psyche that we are so strong that no one dares to lift their hand up towards us, knowing fully well that even if they try to lift that hand, that hand will be cut by us. <laughs> Unless you develop that psyche, we will suffer. Condemn this song everywhere and stop its playing. De diya me azadi bina teer bina dhal. Sant tu ne kar diya kamal because it is a humiliation, it is an insult of all our revolutionaries, all our people of Azadin Forge, all our people of the naval, naval revolution who gave their lives for the sake of this. <laughs> and again, this psyche, this passive psyche, has been intentionally indignant by the Congress rulers in this country. I wish I had another time and I would explain this whole Gandhian stupidity of non-violence which you are showing in this country. Don't forget the psyche behind building the Indian National Congress of A.O. Hume was we need a safety valve for the empire. And the Congress performed that role of safety valve for the British 
till 47 against all revolutionaries, against Azad and Spot, against Green Movement, against any. And let any historian in this country debate on me. Have you ever thought this man Gandhi, who ever always talked of Swadeshi, could find only an English man to be the first Governor General of India? Why? It is all written. I found out, wait for my next book, it's coming, so I put it on the computer. Why? This was all a decided issue. In the last I saw only one line. Wake up. Agar hume survive karna hai, to Hindu dharam keval mandir me jaake ghenti vajane se aur arti utarne se nahi achega. से बाहर निकल आइए रिपब्लिक का भी एक कॉन्क्लेव हो रहा था हमारे दो बड़े महान स्वामी जी भाषण देते हैं बड़े आक्रमण हुए बड़ा कुछ हुआ सनातन तो आज भी जीवित है सनातन का कुछ नहीं मिल रहा आज भी अमेरिका में सनातन पढ़ाया जा रहा है आज योगा कर रहे हैं वेस्ट एशिया में लोग रोक के खड़ा हो मैंने कहा स्वामी जी अफगानिस्तान चला गया पाकिस्तान चला गया बांग्लादेश चला गया करोड़ों सब हिंदू मारे गए आप कहते हैं सनातन का कुछ नहीं मिला आप कहते हैं अमेरिका में सनातन पढ़ाया जा रहा है अमेरिका की यूनिवर्सिटीज में सेमिनार भी किए जा रहे हैं कि हिंदुजन को कैसे खत्म किया जाए आप कहते हैं कि वेस्ट एशिया में योगा हो रहा है तो आप भूल जाते हैं कि कैसे हिंद भी हो रहा है और रोज इस्लामिक टेररिस्ट आ रहे हैं हमने कहा स्वामी जी हमको आपकी जरूरत अमेरिका में नहीं है हमको मर्सडीज स्वामी की जरूरत नहीं है कभी हिम्मत है तो तमिलनाडु का दौरा करिए केरला का दौरा करिए जहां सनातन पे हर तरीके का अटैक हो रहा है और दर्शन को छोड़ दीजिए हमको व्यवहारिक तरीके बताइए कि अपने अस्तित्व के लिए सनातनी क्या करें हिंदू धर्म के लोग क्या करें और मुझे शर्म आती है मैं मोदी जी का बहुत बड़ा समर्थक हूं और रहूंगा लेकिन मोदी जी ये देश गांधी के चरखे से नहीं बचेगा ये देश किशन जी के सुदर्शन चक्र से बचेगा